How did you express yourself before you found music? I learned how to take everything I like, put them in a smoothie blender in my head, and something comes out, and that something is what I am. So, like, if you're a smoothie, then what type of ingredients are in you, then? Strawberries, 100%. This is In Between Bites. My name is Gentle and I'm the journalist hosting the show. We have here Miles, who is our guest today. Um, do you want to give a quick introduction? Okay, what's up everybody? My name is Miles. I'm an artist, songwriter, producer, and I'm from Atlanta. And if I were doing this at Centennial Olympic Park, and yeah, we're just then ask and answer some. He's a rising R&B artist from East Atlanta, but He's based in Palo Alto, kind of now, because yeah. he's going to Stanford. So I went and followed him around for Outside Lands, and we'll get into that later. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to play a little game that takes inspiration from your artist name. Okay. So basically, you're just going to be guessing distances, okay. like based on miles. Yeah. So how many miles is Stanford from Atlanta? Probably like 2,436. That's really close. Yeah. It's up a little bit. 2,500. Lower. 2,475. Okay, your first guess is the closest. 2,449.2 miles. <laughs> How many miles would you venture for a good, like, chocolate chip cookie? Or, like, what's your favorite dessert? Probably a chocolate cookie or a chocolate cookie. Really? Yeah. Okay. Like, like a triple chocolate cookie or just, like... I think as many layers as chocolate. I will say. Because it goes, it goes, like, rich, richer, richest. Yeah. Probably is... Seven. Seven miles? I, I feel like seven miles, because seven miles is a ridiculous to drive. For me, I yeah, like it. I enjoy driving. So yeah, seven miles. Okay. Where would you go if there was a zombie apocalypse and how far away from like civilization would you be willing to go? I'm dead. No, like think about it. You, you could go. Because if you go to some other, because one, you got to be with the resources of, and just off of food thing, you're gonna. But be. like Costco, like what? Like, aren't there too many people? The risk of somebody goes in there who's a zombie is really high. They could True. contaminate everybody who goes in there. Well, I mean, yeah. that if they get infected, sure. But in terms of where the best place to be is, in terms of like how you could survive for a while, it's on food and the weapons too. I feel like there's definitely a lot. Do of they in sell Costco. weapons in? The they don't. But I feel like there's like. A lot of things in Costco that you could eat. Like the pots and pans. Yes. How many miles did you walk during Outside Lands? Too many. Uh, Do you have like the tracker? Do you know the exact route? Oh. Oh, really? No, I don't. Um, I don't. I don't like take steps. I take a lot of walks. I I really do enjoy walks, which is why I was never in this or anything. Golden Gate Park is. Do I? I know Golden Gate Park is bigger than Central Park. I told you that. Yeah. yeah. You just told me that. <laughs> Nice, I'm glad you remember. <laughs> yeah. Gorgia Park is later than Central Park, but did we walk the extent? We definitely walked, I definitely walked the extent of that park. I could. Oh, well, the, the, like, because the Outside Lands Festival doesn't take up the entire park. I think it takes up one third of it. Okay. But we walked the extent of that. And I would be willing to say that I probably walked the extent of that park. We walked it at least three times. Yeah. So I'm sure you did it more than that. Wait, did you end up um like talking to Kevin Abstract again afterwards? Yeah, I I was able to kind of talk backstage. It was really cool actually. I didn't know he's from Douglasville. Douglasville is probably like third miles like west. I was able to kind of talk to Kevin Abstract backstage, and I asked him, "Yo, I know you used to be in my shoes, like." what would you say now that you've been there and now you're here and it was like consistency trying to actively get better by taking inspiration from things that you wouldn't even think you would need you know what i mean taking inspiration from always striving to discover and keeping that grid no matter what the changing landscape is <laughs> that was really good advice do you feel like it, you've already applied it to the well, you're, you're kind of working on another project, you know? Yeah. Were you thinking about what he told you during that? Definitely. I think that this next project that I'm working on that is about to kind of be what it is, I'm trying to survey the environment, like what's going on, and put my own spin on it, take things that are old and make it, like, that's, I'm currently, like, retro futures. 
Mm -hmm. like you know whatever it was from before what other artists right now do you think are oh uh, like retro futuristic artists retro futuristic artists off the top of my head um leon tunnels duran bernard dude i love duran bernard's I've mentioned too. Like, he quotes Disney a surprising amount, and so like Nickelodeon too. Like one of our last parts of our conversation, he was like, "If you just gotta keep swimming," and he was like making references to like, oh, and then he was like, "Oh, you know that scene in this movie where instead of going through the trench, they try to go above it, and that's worse." And he like that was one out of like five that's metaphors he made. Yeah, related to movies, but that's what well, he's with. <laughs> so this next part is called palatable palettes and in between bites we'll be auctioning off the artwork created by you and we'll give half of those proceeds to a community grid or um food bank in new york city okay. so basically the prompt for what you're going to draw is you're going to draw what you hope or believe the future holds for you and you can use like the stuff in here and it can be abstract it doesn't have to literally be like a specific entity or like prize that you want to win so first question, what was it like opening up for Outside Lands? It was fire. It was a lot of really cool, like, it, it brought me to a point where I, you know, it brought me to a point where I feel like I'm at a crossroad. Because, for example, that's a music festival. I've never played any type of festival. Like I told you, I've never been to any type of music festival. And to be able to do that and to be on the same stage with even get to have the chance to interact with people that I used to watch on my TV screen when I was like 12, 13 years old mm -hmm. is a blessing. And it's like, you know, I feel like on one hand, it's like, wow, this is amazing that you got to do this thing. But on the other hand, it's like, okay, this is now a bitch mark. He is. It's not to say that, you know, me ha if I get, oh, if I don't do this again, then it's like, it's over. But it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, it makes me want to, aim higher and continue to be you like yeah let's do this let's 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 keep going as far as we can how did they choose you for that we were put in contact with someone that honestly was just showing a lot of love they were like they were like we'd like to do this and we were like of course we'd like to do this <laughs> yeah and yeah shout out victoria i think yeah i want in my future just to be able to execute on those type of stages and it feels natural to me i'm like okay yeah this is what i'm supposed to be doing this is where i'm supposed to be i'm supposed to be on this same level as the things i'm doing outside and you know how type of people i want to be around the type of people i want to be around are creators that think outside the box like me and i want to push myself to think even further outside of my box that i even think i can yeah, I will say, though, like, during the festival itself, you were really, like, the crowd work was really good. Like, you're interacting with them. I, I honestly, I feel like people in the crowd wouldn't have guessed that was your first time. I, I was able to do a show when Jordan Wood came to Stanford. Mm -hmm. That was super cool because I was like, yo, I, I, I remember with Jordan Fouch, I was like, yo, it's an honor to, like, be doing this show with you. He was like, yeah, like, just keep doing this. And this, like, you'll be able to be running these shows like I am right now. Like, oh, that's crazy. It, it was, it was mutual respect, and I appreciated that. And it, it was still, it still is a little surreal to me because you know, as someone that I've seen and respect, someone that pushes me to grow it, and to even have someone like that say that I can is a possibility too. It's like, yeah, it makes you want to go harder. Do you think it's just like a matter of time and perseverance for most people? like in succeeding nowadays. I feel like every artist is able to build an, a niche for themselves. Yeah. Because people are really open to like experimental sounds nowadays. I think that is the most wonderful part of the fact that I'm from the internet generation. Yeah. I love being from the internet generation. I think that we knew, I think that we were observers for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And now we just kind of do what we want. And I'm not sure if it's a generational, we want to be free, we want to be independent in our thoughts, live, all of that, like our thoughts and the ways that we get to be. So when I think when other people see the people that are just trying to make what's in their head out in this real world, then people gravitate towards that. 
And I think in any other um, any other generation before us, it was happening like that, but it is now. And that's beautiful. That's like a really poignant way to express that. But I'm curious, so when did you get into music? I've kind of been into music my whole life. My my musical history briefly, I uh, I was always kind of like playing piano. I did choirs and but outside of it. When I started making my own music, I started on Audacity and like a really like broken deal. Really? And from then on, I got a fell that I was, I was at Chick-fil-A. Yeah. I was at Chick-fil-A. I think I told you this. Yeah. I was at Chick-fil-A and I worked in the first like thing I did with my money was got guitars and bases. Mm-hmm. Not that I knew how to play them. Mm-hmm. And I figured out how to play them. And from then on, I just kind of was in my room. And now, like the the fact that I can go from being in my room to now out of my room, outside, outside lanes. Yeah. How did you express yourself before you found music? Because you didn't learn how to play the instruments until it, well, even after you bought it, right? I was well. I was always singing. I was always singing. But the first time I think I probably put my own song into an you can use. I was probably at thirteen years old, so this was six years ago. But yeah, I mean, up this for like six years. Damn. What have you learned over those six years? I've learned how to take everything I like or specific things that I like, put them in a smoothie blender in my head, and something comes out, and that something is what I... That is the greatest ability that you have at just... So, like, if you're a smoothie, then what type of ingredients are in you, then? Strawberries, 100%. Is that your favorite fruit? Yeah, strawberries are my favorite fruit. Um... Well, okay, I'm going to answer this question in two ways. I'm going to give you a literal smoothie, and then I'm going to give you, like, a metaphorical smoothie. Mm-hmm. So, if my, if I was a smoothie, I would have strawberries in there. I would have chili in there. I would have, I'm hesitant to say banana, because what's pushing? Yeah, it just tastes like banana. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's, it's one of those type of fruits. I would say maybe, let me small, a very small amount of cranberry. Because the cranberry goes with anything. Some mango. For sure. I'm made up of alternative culture from being here, but also the old school culture being here. Like, my mom's a huge new edition head. Dolly Brown, boys to me. Yeah. That. And my dad, I remember specifically from my dad, a lot of um, reggae, a lot of specifically um the song no 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 by don penn my dad's shown the Panama. to my knowledge it starts over there and it comes over here so then being from east atlanta just tell me about your neighborhood and like what you love most about it i think when i talk about my neighborhood i have to talk about it i feel like i live on the edge of gentrification because anywhere anywhere West and I, I'm using West because the highway. I told you this is the way I explain to people. Mm-hmm. I, I'm on I-20 West. I am like EAV East Atlanta Village area, and we're on the very edge of gentrification. Anything west of that going into here downtown is nice and has gotten gentrified. But anything east of that, um, anything northeast of that, they just haven't gotten to just yet. Yeah, I really just didn't really just you. Know, mm-hmm. Yeah. But I love this city with all my heart. Mm-hmm. I think this is the greatest city in the world. And then I have hella bias, but I'm okay with that. It, at least your neighborhood is at the forefront of like what Atlanta is becoming. Yeah. What do you think is the future of the city then? I see. And how do you want to contribute to it? That's, that's such a good question. This city, to me, is on the same level of the forward thinking hustle bustle cities of the United States of the world. I think it's just, it just looks a little different here. Like this is a city that it is a city, but in many ways it feels like a small town. I guess to in, to go more in depth on the familiarity part, it's not even a thing of like known people because we shared the common experience. It's, I think about being here, whether you're from here or not, sometimes that is a common experience just because people are very friendly here. We're, we're very welcoming and open. 
we have conversations, which doesn't happen everywhere. Like I think a lot of Atlanta is what's hidden in plain sight. And the fact that in order to see why it's great sometimes that like you have to work to see it. And then the journey of seeing that is why it's great. Like that's a part of the destination. Mm. Are you the type of person that's like, the journey is makes makes it worth it? Or are you like, uh, the final product is makes it worth it? In, in life, it's a bit of both. But I mean, definitely want to explore the journey side. Mm. Because I can have everything I want tomorrow. It's like, dang, I have everything. And it's like, but I don't feel accomplished because I don't, I didn't work towards it. Mm. Like everything has to be built brick by brick. Cause you could, you could have it all. Yeah. You, you could have it all, but then eventually, cause the thing about having anything that you want is that once you get it, you have to do it again. True. And, and if you get it the first time by, not to say rely on other people, but like, you know, just, I don't care how it gets done, just get it done. You have to do it again. That's just, that's just a lot of pain and some of um, headache to, it's like if you figure out how to do it the way that you want to do it, and the next time you got to do it, it's like, but I know how to do this. I don't know if this is like a weird thing to say, but I feel like Atlanta has a lot of black people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I know that in a lot of articles, like with KQED, SoundCloud, and Forbes, you're mentioning that like part of the reason why you like making music is because you want to express like vulnerability as like a black man. Yeah. Were you ever like scared when you were writing it yourself? Or has being vulnerable always come easy to you? Like, did you have a role model for that vulnerability? Or was that something that you, like, decided one day, like, I'm going to be the role model? I think when I make music, there's no way for me to make music and not say what's going on. Mm. Because if you're not writing about what's going on, then what are you writing about? You just, like, some people are storytellers in a way that they can come up with worlds. Mm. I think that the way that I come up with worlds is by being in my world and expressing that's in my world, what's going on. I think to say vulnerability always came easy to me to be a lie, but I think that I think as I've grown, it's because saying what I mean as explicitly as as clearly as I possibly can is always a, a thing that I'm trying to do. All there, so. And I'd say that I grew into it over time, and I'm still trying to grow into it. I, I, that's why my changes. Why do you think about like parasocial relationships though nowadays? Because as you're growing as a musician, as an and as an artist, and like even at the Outside Lands Festival, when I was following you guys around, so many people came up, like they would interrupt conversations that you were having, or like, yeah. when we were watching Shibuzi from like the top of that like yeah. hill, yeah. that guy came up and he, he just started a conversation with you. Like, that is like another aspect of vulnerability, I feel, where now you're like open to the public and like, yeah. you are like a conversation topic. How do you think you're gonna navigate that, especially since I feel like it hasn't hit you fully, but like, it's like trickling in. Yeah, it definitely, like, yeah, no, it, it, it's not a thing that I'm worried about that will lead me out at all. It's like, okay, for other people, I say things that relate to life. <laughs> and if there was someone that you saw, like, I think the good thing about it is that people say like they can talk to. <laughs> and I think that as long as it's not, like, Yo, I, I was outside their house. Yeah, but it, <laughs> like I, and I know that this is your mother's favorite color, so I got you this son. <laughs> like no, not, as long as it's done like that, it's like yeah, we can have a conversation about it. Like who are you? Why? Like I, I want to know like who are you? Why? Why does this resonate with you? What things have happened to you that make you really gravitate towards this? And I think it's it's kind of like you transmit that signal out, and then people receive it they transmit what they have going on and i receive that and transmit yeah as you yeah and with that kind of constant communication you do become closer you know yeah. even though we're not in the same state you could be 2400 like 79 two or something that many miles away and you could still know how i did and that's important mm. did you like interstellar 
I did. <laughs> yeah, that's like, like the entire basis of them and be like, no matter how far you are, even dimensions wise, you can like feel it. Yeah, the world is huge. The world is huge. So the fact that we can all be together because of the internet and because of music. Yeah. Like that's not something I take for granted. I know humans are still trying to figure out why we like music. Like we don't have a solid answer. I saw something one time that it was like images or how we decorate space. Music is how we decorate. Space. Yeah, I saw that. That was a tweet. Yeah, <laughs> that was a tweet. It's always tweets. Socrates once said, "No one said that." <laughs> were you expecting that kind of crowd response? When you were performing? I still had a hard time. Not a hard time, per se. But I still don't really get the fact that like, people listen to what I'm saying. Take it in their own vibes. And actually, I live with it. And that caused the connection. I, I still have a hard time to even listen to me. So, what's the purpose of, like being a student for you then because i feel like a lot of musicians i know especially who are on like the same route as you what they drop out they're like i'm just gonna devote it to music why are you in school though why am i in school because it it feeds my brain in the ways that music doesn't call the time all the circuits chips all that current and peers those are my buzzwords i'm studying because it's interesting but it also has a lot of relation to music at the end of the day, the sound waves are doing And you build a guitar. Yeah. I'm, I build, build it. Still, like, I, I'm trying, I'm building a second one. It, it feeds my brain in ways that just do the music does. I'm curious, I'm inquisitive about that type of stuff. I want to know the inner workings. So, like, electrical engineering, as of right now, is helping me do that. Okay. This question is kind of like from left field, but who is Rufus D. Ruggs? Rufus D. Rudd is a character that I made up for my, a character that I made up for a short film. It was just an idea. I was like, what if there was this dude and me owned a rug shop and he was like really about his rugs. But he, he but he used to be like on his days of both. Yeah. I watched the yeah. short film for it. Yeah. And now he just like, I thought it was just such a funny situation. You just came up with the character, or does it mean something deeper? Or you're just like, this will be hilarious, and I want to do it. I I mean, on the surface of it, yes, but I think that Roosevelt represents what happens in dreams, how dreams can change. Mm. Like, cause, you know, he used to be on that stage. Yeah. And now, you know, he's not on the stage, but he loves his roads. Yeah. But he also loves, like, he has passion, I think, that I, I did that... Maybe on a subconscious level because I was trying to find, I mean, I was like, what, what? Do you foresee that happening to you too? I hope, I hope so, but I also hope not. Like I, the story of your life might be cool <laughs> if you like find a way to AC it, but I'm not specific. Oh yeah, the dream is to live in storage <laughs> and like sell, so, right? As of, yeah, but you know, dreams could change. I don't know when, but it would be saying in like a year. Well, with the music videos, I just want to know, so with the U-Hauls, were you actually using it to move to California, or was that just a prop thing? Well... And why the light in the box? So is that just because it looked cool on camera, or is there a meaning? The light in the box just represents everything in store. If no, in theory, they, they are my box. That is, this, I is this similar? Cotton? Where it's like light in a box? Yeah, okay, so... <laughs> to explain what I got going on. Yeah. Basically, this is what I was saying, like... You could be in the box. So basically with this, we got like, this to me represents the box. And you see, you think there's a lot of energy. Yeah. You can do a lot within the box, but sometimes, like at least for me, I want to see what's out here mm -hmm. as well. Like I'm trying to get out of my own box. And you see like, that's why this, the pain kind of as it continues to seep out and go into whatever I don't. This is, this is everything that I know from like my own upbringing and things. This is the rest of everything. And I want to see what more I can do to be here. Like, this is kind of like a manifestation of goal. What gives you, like, life as a musician is, like, when other people connect to it. But do you ever listen to your own music and reconnect with it? Or is that, oh, okay. Yeah, music is like a diary for me. Like, some people, I, some people write music to feel cool. Some people write music to to build worlds. 
like just tell stories of things that haven't happened. Mm -hmm. I write music to tell stories that I think unusual is about uncertainty over new people in your life. And it's like when your first meeting, you don't know where it's going to go. It's like you're like, this is strange. I don't know why I'm acting like this. I don't know why you were acting like this. But we can just call it for what it is and it just is oxygen was written after the pen or during the pandemic yeah. so with the time capsule of 2020 like things yeah my music is time capsule for me people and then but it becomes time caps for other people too yeah yeah oh beast from the snow yeah so when i was listening to that i was Wait, driving over the bay bridge and i was literally texting you and i was like what's going on at that festival so that's like a time capsule for me <laughs> um, speaking of like time capsules what are you working on right now for your second project this next project that's about to come out it's the furthest back i've ever reached as blatantly like it's like oh. real reach back and it's the first I've tried to push it forward. This next project is called Lost the Disco. Ooh. And we're taking it from like the sounds of the 70s, like back when they were really first using synths, I feel like. Mm. And they were just like loud. The soundscapes were so technologically enhanced. We're taking it from that. And it's disco, it's dance, it's all within that kind of fun, Fast air. I think taking from like Bee Gees, uh, Parliament, Funkadelic, mm. taking from CB Wonder stuff. Oh my gosh, Stevie. Um, I love CB Wonder. Bad. <laughs> and then just trying to figure out, like, from a science perspective, from the vision perspective, this is going to be really cohesive and people are gonna really like it how many tracks are and what's on this one is a little use so we do a fire salt got it and then in terms of what's next it's a mix of what's been going on since this past year like kind of unloading that because you know every musician music is always from a band like it's like okay there's this thing and then there's this other thing i'm just trying to tell my story in order so it's that it's kind of reconnecting with what's here and i can't even tell you too much about it because i don't even know mixing that all in with the sound and this the new soundscape we're trying to get into it's super exciting being able to show people because this was definitely a thing i was on at that time and now it's like okay finally you can like show what's going on 